guys, so let's go straight into this video. I'm gonna start off with one cup of softened room temperature unsalted butter. And I just went ahead and made that nice and fluffy before I went ahead and added my one and a half cups of sugar. Wait for it to become like a grainy like texture. And then add your two eggs that should both be room temperature into the mixture. I added mine at two separate times just so that one could mix fully before I went ahead and did the other one. And then I like to go ahead and just scrape the bottom of the bowl to make sure everything is being nice and um, mixed in together. Go ahead and put two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. I put one fourth teaspoon of salt and then I also put a half a teaspoon of baking powder and then gradually start to add in your three and a half cups of flour. And the reason why I add in a little at a time is because it's just so much that I feel like if you put in it all at one time, it takes kind of forever for you to recognize if everything is being mixed in together. And also it can create a mess and become and fly everywhere around the room and then there's dust, flour dust everywhere. So now I have my cookie dough and I actually got this idea from somebody on YouTube. I like to do it in little portions because it's just too much for me to try to knead at one point and roll out. So for me, I like to go ahead and just do a little bit at a time. And then I'm gonna use a rolling pin um, on wax paper, making sure the cookie dough is rolled out evenly. And then I put another paper on top and then I put that in the fridge. I'm gonna repeat this process until I have all the cookie dough pretty much in the wax paper. Um, with the amount of cookie dough that we should have, we should only really have like two of these or maybe two and a half like I had. And then you wanna put these into the fridge for about an hour. Now the reason why I do this is because when you take it out of the fridge, it's gonna be super, super, super hard. Um, if you watch the original video, she says the same exact thing, which is where I got the idea from. Um, it's just so much easier to roll out beforehand so that when you take it out the fridge, you don't really have to do much because when you put it in the fridge, it is gonna get slightly harder. So roll it out now so that it's easier when you take it out. Now you can see I have one, two, and three, <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and just start cutting out the shapes or pressing out the shapes um, that I want my cookies to be in. So they're gonna be in a hexagon shape. Um, I found these from Amazon. They kind of rust a little bit, so just keep that in mind. Don't use them in the dishwasher, wash them by hand and make sure they're completely dry. I went ahead and I did six cookies at a time because I have a very small cookie tray and I did not plan for this video. So I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to go ahead and buy a bigger one. Um, but it did also help me to keep track of what I was doing as far as how I wanted it to be. Now, before when I made these, cause I made these one time before, I kept it in the oven for 10 minutes and the cookies came out crunchy. If you do want nice, soft, chewy cookies, keep it in for eight minutes, depending on how well your oven is, okay? Then you wanna go ahead and line your baking pan with parchment paper. Now it's time to prepare the fondant. And I'm using Wilton's fondant mixed with a marshmallow recipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and just create this beautiful marble color. Um, but first, I had this fondant made two days beforehand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just like, make sure it's all nicely <laughs> kneaded out. And then I'm gonna sprinkle my surface with some powdered sugar and then I also have some uh, vegetable shortening on my gloves so that the fondant does not stick to my hand. Um, I'm using this color, I believe it's the color rose and I'm using a toothpick and I'm, I did one dip and now I'm gonna go ahead and just massage the color into it until it becomes a nice pretty pink color. So we have this color, I love it, I'm super satisfied. Um, I did this for my uh, neighbor's uh, daughter's birthday and her theme was hot pink. So now I have the color pink, Rosa, and I'm just gonna do, again, one toothpick, 
down and just really mixing the color in now i felt like it was way too light it wasn't like contrasty enough so i did go ahead and add just a teeny bit more just to darken it a little <laughs> slightly more and that was pretty much good enough now i went ahead and just made all the fondants one length and then now i'm just going to go ahead and just squeeze it together fold it roll it now when you're doing marble the you can pretty much do whatever you want to create this now keep in mind the more the more you try to mix the colors in it's going to become like one color so i i realized that the first time i did this so make sure you don't do too much massage and you do enough and then you go ahead and roll it out because that's when you'll see the actual marble effect <laughs> And then just roll it out as much as possible um the good thing is after you've um ignore that little part in the middle i kind of messed up a little bit <laughs> but um <laughs> i got to i kept rolling out so much that it kind of ripped so don't roll it out too much but um what i'm gonna do is go ahead and pull the excess fondant up which we are going to use the rest later on just in case you need more fondant go ahead and roll it out all over again and make sure your cookies are cool before you place the fondant on top. I have a brush and I have some water. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint the back of the fondant. Um, and then attach it to the cookie. And it's going to be super, it sticks when you add water to it. So it's going to stick perfectly onto the cookie. Now, at first I was like, how would those taste? Fondant on cookies. It tastes super good. It's a nice chewy consistency. Nice uh, chewy taste. It doesn't taste super fondant-y. Um, and you can make your fondant thin so that there's not as much fondant on the cookie. So really roll it out super, super, super thin if that's the case. Um, but it will be kind of hard to pick up off of your surface if you don't have enough powdered sugar underneath. Okay, now I have these um, embossing letter that I got, or engraving letters, um, that I got from Amazon. Um, they're a little difficult to put together, and I would say practice on one cookie first so that you can kind of tell if you're writing it backwards or if it's not put in, the letters are not put in the right direction. And then once you've figured it out, go ahead and start stamping all your cookies. And so... Um, she was the she was having a trap ball. Um, her name was Zion, so I went ahead and just put Zion Sweet 13, and then I added trap ball on some of the other cookies. I believe in total I might have had. Um, let me see. I had four trays. That was 24 cookies. Now I have this gold foil that I got from Amazon, for like 25 dollars for this. Be very careful because once you open it and air touches it, it kind of like shrivels together. So work fast when it comes to this. And I'm just using um, a wet brush and just dabbing it onto the gold and rubbing it onto the actual cookies. Now don't use too much water. It's going to be the fondant. It's going to get shiny and look wet. So yeah, keep that in mind. And that was pretty much the end result. I think this was super fun. It was super easy to do. The cookies, if you have a large tray, really only takes about eight to ten minutes to bake so if you're doing two trays you figure you have 16 minutes in total super easy the fondant i already pre-made but that's also easy so i would say in total this project could take you up to maybe mm, maybe three three and a half hours because you do have to make the cookies cool and stuff like that so and put it in the fridge for an hour but thanks for watching this video guys i actually had a lot of fun making it and they were so good now i need a break from baking because i keep eating so much sweets <laughs> Thanks for watching this, guys. I'll see you guys in my next video.